So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over another topic test on the high syllabus looking at collecting and representing data. Now as always there will be a copy of the questions in the description below for you to download and have an attempt at before watching this video and going through the answers. So let's get started on this collecting and representing data topic test on the high syllabus. So looking at question one it says the diagram shows the number of goals scored by a team with their old manager. And just don't read enough there. Then it says that the team has a had a new manager for the last few games of the season. They scored 40 goals over the whole season of 24 matches. How many goals per game or per match did they score on average with the new manager? Now for this, what we need to do first is get the data of the old manager, which is represented by this line graph. So if we start by representing the data and put it into a table. So here we've got the number of goals and we're going to have the frequency which is basically what the line graph shows so here we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 now in terms of frequencies all I'm going to do is read off the graph so for 0 we've got 5 then we've got 6 then we've got 4 then we've got 3 and we've got 1 and 1 now if we then total this up, because all we want to do is work out how many goals games there were, which there were 20 games from the old manager, and the total number of goals, well, let me just edit that, is by creating our fx column. So if I just multiply each of those numbers, I will then work out what the total number of goals were. Uh, let me just do that. So here we've got 0. 6, 8, 9, 4, and 5. Now, if we add up all those numbers, we see that we scored, or they scored a total of, in 20 games, they scored 32 goals. Now, what we want to do with that is we want to compare these numbers with these numbers. So, with the old manager, so with the new manager, They scored, and it's going to be 40 minus 32, which is 8 goals, in, and it's going to be 24 minus 20 in 4 games. So what was the average? Well, the average is going to be 8 divided by 4, so then it's going to be 2 goals per match with the new manager. Then moving on to question two, it says that Jess measures the height of each student in her year. Which two words describe the data she collects? So she is collecting the data, so then it's going to be primary, and it's going to be numerical data, and it's going to be uh, a range of values, so it's going to be continuous. And then for the next question, it says that Jess records the data in this table and draws a frequency polygon. And the question is asking us to write down two mistakes that she has made. Well, the two mistakes that she's made is that she has not used the midpoints. Or the heights. And again, because when you've got group data, you're kind of assuming that all the data in that group falls, satisfies the midpoint. And then the third mistake, or the second mistake she made, is that she messed up the third point. So the third point is incorrect as an incorrect frequency. You could say that it was plotted incorrectly, so something along the lines, but basically something that says that that point there is wrong. Then moving on to question three, it says that the table shows information about distance travelled but uh, to make 500 deliveries and the question is asking is to complete the community frequency column so what we want to do is just do a running total so the missing numbers are going to be 300 at 425 and then we just need to add 75 to that to make 500 and then we then need to show the information on the community diagram so again what you need to do make sure that you're doing is that you're plotting the community frequency to the upper values so I'm plotting each of these numbers 
against those highlighted then I don't know why uh, I think it's just a case of editing the wire there come up with boxes hopefully your printout came up with the correct inequality now, it doesn't really matter whether they're equal to but we're just going to put equal to because I'm guessing that the front inequality is absolutely fine so in terms of plotting so again you should have these correctly plotted so at 10 I'm going to plot it at 0 and then at 40 which is the next one it's going to be at 60 which is there then at 60 it is at 300 then at 80 it is at 425 uh, which is in between and then at 100 it's at 500 so like so then what we want to do then is because it says to plot a community frequency graph we're going to join these up with a nice smooth curve and again, make sure that your point, your lines or your curve go through all the points that you've plotted. Like so. Now, obviously, yours is going to be hopefully a little bit more easier. It's just a bit more difficult with this. Um, and again, let me just draw that one a little bit easier in terms of something that looks like long lines that are there where you've got no dips. Then moving on to question 3C, it says deliveries under X miles are free. 50 of the deliveries were free. Use your graph to estimate X. So what we need to do here is we need to find 50. We then sort of project across. And then as soon as it hits, we then want to move down. Like so. And I reckon that uh, any acceptable answer, if you've plotted it correctly, should be I would say around about 36 or 37 or 38 something along those lines I know my graph isn't perfect but when I did this on paper they're the numbers that you should have then moving on to question four it says that the pie chart shows the information about number of students attending four colleges and it says 1200 students attended college D altogether how many students attended all of the co uh, colleges so here we know that this angle here. Now what we need to do first is measure this. We measure this angle using a protractor and we work out it to be around about 60 degrees. So what that means is that 60 degrees equals 1200 people. And I want to know what 360 is so therefore 360 degrees well if I just multiply that by 6, I multiply this by 6, and I get 7,200, and there is my total. Then moving on to our next question, which I think is our last one, it is, yep. Yeah. So it says the table and the histogram give information about the masses of 600 hamsters. And so what we need to do is we need to complete, to complete the table and the histogram. Now for this, what we need to do first is, well, with a couple of things we need to do, we need to find out what the frequencies are and we also need to label and then plot the remaining two columns are going to be. So looking at the bit that is complete, well, I know that the first column is complete and what I need to do is then the class width, so that's going to be 30 um, and it's going to be 20 and 10, 20 and 40. And with this, what I then need to do is do a frequency density column. So, and to work out the frequency density, all I need to do is just simply divide those two numbers up. So looking at our first bit of data, we've got 120 divided by 30, and that's going to give me an answer of 4. So that means that the first bar needs to go up to 4. So if this bar goes up to 4, so if that's 4, then that's definitely going to be 2. And it basically means that this so a histogram in terms of blocks of five is going up in twos. Now from this, I can then work out what the frequency density is for the second group. So that's at six. And then I can then from that, I can do six times 20, which is going to give me 120. And then I can work out what the third one, which is 10. And so that's going to be one. And then from this, I can then work out what the frequency density is going to be for the others. So for 120 to 140, it's going to be 9. And 
for the next one it's going to be two so then all I've then got to do is complete this histogram and again I strongly recommend you use a ruler so your first one shouldn't be there get rid of that should be halfway so looking at nine like so then drawing the line downwards and again should be using a ruler and then for my final one it's going from 140 to 180 and it's got a height of two so it should look something like that and again obviously if you've got a bit of time you can shade it in you're not going to get any marks for that as long as the bars are the right width and the right height you're going to be absolutely fine and that concludes the end of this test